Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Likewise. After 13 years of practicing in the field of ABA, I finally am having the courage to take my exam. I, like many people, have avoided it, and now that the task list is changing, it's my last chance while my requirements are still met by my schooling. So I'm making videos for you to study along with me. Today we're going to talk about the difference between experimental control, internal validity, and confounding variables. So stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Like I promised, today we're going to really go into detail about experimental design and what is experimental control, what is internal validity, and what are confounding variables. Well, one of the best things about behavior analysts is that we use science to back up all of our interventions. We don't just haphazardly guess things. We're constantly trying to replicate interventions. We're constantly making sure what we're doing is working. And the way we do that is by ensuring we have experimental control. Well, what is experimental control? Experimental control means that we can apply the same intervention and we can repeat it and it will produce the same effect on behavior. So essentially what it's saying is, is it actually true that the independent variable had an effect on the dependent variable? And if that is true, can we do it again? Well, I do apologize about the noise. If you're hearing in the background, there are apparently cicadas attacking um, my home. So we're working from home, so we're just gonna live with that. So I apologize for that. So that is what experimental control is. Now that's really, really important because in ABA, we wanna make sure what we're doing is replicatable and repeatable. Because if not, it may just be a fluke. It's very hard to demonstrate that we actually had experimental control if we repeat a study and the results are not the same. So that is different than internal validity. What internal validity does, and look at that as a more discrete thing, where internal validity is making sure that in any given experiment, what actually changed the behavior was the independent variable. So the independent variable is what caused an effect on the dependent variable. I'm repeating myself and I'm using these words over and over because the truth is there's a lot of ways to say the same thing. And on your AB exam, you're probably gonna need to know all of them. So again, experimental control is the degree to which the study can be repeated. Is it actually true that this behavior change is actually or is being caused by the intervention? And internal validity is looking at a specific study and saying, in this particular case, was it actually the treatment that had an effect on behavior? And if it was not the treatment, what would it be? Well, those things are called confounding variables or extraneous factors. Those are anything that are not part of the experiment. Some people word that as anything that you can't control. And I don't actually like that because you can actually control a lot of confounding variables. Um, there's things that you can do. So it's not that you have no control over it. It's that there, there are things that are outside the parameters of the experiment. So for example, if you go to do an intervention and the treatment room, the air condition's broken and it's hot, that could potentially have an effect on the behavior. Let's say that the child didn't sleep well the night before, that can have an effect on the behavior. Let's say he's recovering from an illness, that can have an effect on the behavior. Let's say there's cicadas in the background and all of a sudden it was super quiet and I started making this video and they got really excited and started making all this noise just like that. Well, maybe the background noise that you're hearing right now is having an effect on your ability to understand this information. That's not something I planned for. Um, they were not making noise when I started this video. They started making noise after I started this video. So that's a perfect example of a confounding variable. I could not have planned it better. Um, maybe that is affecting your ability to understand this information. So these are all really important concepts. Like I said, in ABA, one of the best things is that we do test all of our interventions. We make sure they're valid. We make sure they're replicatable. So these are important terms to know and understand, but they're also important terms to apply to make sure your interventions are effective. So again, my name is Jessica. Likewise, I'm making videos just like this, actually sometimes more than once a day. Every video also has a study note that comes with it. If you want to access those study notes, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. Now I have a blog and these are posted on my blog, but they're not official blog posts. They're actually my study notes that I'm just posting up there, which means they're not really in proper sentences and they're not necessarily edited, but they're really effective for me to study, which means they'll be effective for you to study. So they're for free, so just go grab them. Again, hopeeducationservices.com. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel. 
And I'm going to be putting more videos just like this one. Thanks, guys. Thank you.